In this video, I'm going to go through all the curly arrow mechanisms you need to know for your OCRA A-level in chemistry. Stay tuned right to the end of this video for a bonus mechanism, which is hidden inside module six. It's an application of one of those you've already done, but it's very easy to overlook this. Let's get started. So this first mechanism is nucleophilic substitution. It uses the nucleophile, OH-, and it's when haloalkanes are reacting in alkaline solution. There's no intermediate step, just make sure that you don't forget the dipole on the haloalkane at the start. This second example is also nucleophilic, but it's nucleophilic addition. And it's the first of the two nucleophilic addition examples we're gonna look at in this video. This one's when aldehydes and ketones react with NaBH4 aqueous, which provides us with the hydride nucleophile. Don't forget the bond on the carbonyl molecule, so that's the aldehyde or the ketone, is polar at the start, and we do have an intermediate step, which must use H2O. So here is the second example of the nucleophilic addition mechanism. This time we're using acidified potassium cyanide, which provides us with a cyanide ion instead of the hydride ion that we saw last time. It's still aldehydes and ketones, and it's still nucleophilic addition, but you'll also notice here that our intermediate step doesn't use H2O, and instead we use the H plus ion provided by the acidic conditions. There's also only one product at the end of this mechanism. We don't have the OH- that we saw at the end of the last one. So for this one, we're moving away from second year content and away from nucleophiles back into first year for electrophilic addition. For this version of electrophilic addition, we're looking at halogens reacting with alkene molecules. The halogen wouldn't have a dipole. In fact, the dipole on the halogen has been induced by the double bond we can see in our alkene functional group. The intermediate here is a carbocation but because we're using Br2 or Cl2 or I2 as our reagent here, we don't need to worry about what carbocation we form. We just need to make sure that it's definitely one of the two carbons that was originally in the alkene double bond. So this is our second look at electrophilic addition. This time we've got alkenes reacting with hydrogen halides like HBr or the HCl you can see on screen now. 
Now, this time, our molecule of HCl has got a permanent dipole, so it isn't induced by the double bond. And if we've got a non-symmetrical alkene, it will matter what kind of carbocation intermediate I produce, as that will influence the structure of the final product. On screen now, you can see that I've created a secondary carbocation intermediate, and that's because I want to make the major product. I had to make sure I used the more stable carbocation out of my two choices. The alternative would have been to put the carbocation at the end of the chain, which would have only been a primary carbocation, and that's less stable. This secondary carbocation was my route to the major product. Sticking with electrophiles, but moving to the second year of the course, we have electrophilic substitution. Now for electrophilic substitution, there are quite a wide range of electrophiles that you can use from module six of the specification. And you need to make sure as well that you know the equations for forming all of these electrophiles. Make sure that you're very, very careful with the start of your curly arrow in this mechanism and how you've got that molecule for your intermediates with the broken aromaticity. The C shape that represents the remaining delocalized electrons has to be very carefully drawn. Also, don't forget that every time you do this, no matter which electrophile you choose, you always make an H plus at the end of the mechanism. This final mechanism is the same mechanism of nucleophilic substitution that we saw at the start of this video, but it's hidden in module six, which is for the second year of the course, for when haloalkanes react with KCN in ethanol. It provides us with a cyanide nucleophile, and it's a way of creating a carbon-carbon bond. Make sure you don't overlook this as an example of nucleophilic substitution, which is right at the end of the second year of the course. Thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel so you're kept updated. Until next time, happy revising.